All right, so let's take a look at this. So what we want to establish, uh, we will record this, like I said, and it'll be on our website if you need to, uh, if you need to review this. The first thing we got to do, you know, as our members know, is that we need to establish if the market can only do two things, right? We know it can go vertical or sideways, like we always talk about. So if we know it can only go vertical or sideways, we need to establish whether we need to be net buyers or net sellers in that particular instrument. And it doesn't matter if you're trading futures, if you're trading stocks, if you're trading, because this system works with any any uh, ETFs, if you're trading options, uh, whatever you're trading, this is this uh, Forex, this is pretty much plug and play, uh, this system. So um, whatever you are trading, this is the same for all markets right across the board. So we know we got to establish what the market is doing because that's if you establish the overall uh, trend of the market, whether it be we're going vertical or we're going sideways, it's going to accelerate your trading. So we need to understand the trend. So the easiest way, the first thing to do is mark down, there's a trend box. Now this trend box is it turns, uh, it closes red or closes green, and there's a lot of filters built into this trend box. What this trend box does, it allows you to understand what the scope of the trend is. So that's the first thing that you can look at right away. Do I have a trend box red, or do I have a trend box that's green? If you have a trend box that is red, then you are looking at a downtrend, a downtrending market. If you have a trend box that is green, then you're looking at an uptrending market. So there's filters already built into the trend box. That's one thing. The second thing that's very important about the trend box is speed bars. Because what traders have to realize is that if you don't have any speed in the market, it's very difficult to, uh, to day trade the market, especially if you're day trading. Position trading, you can get away with it. But if you're trying to day trade the S&P or any type of market, then you've got to have speed. So what the trend box does, it gives us a heads up when speed's coming in the market. There's one trend box, and here's another trend box of speed. Now, when I talk about speed, I talk about having at least two candles or less that close inside of a closed trend box. So if I blow this up, and I want to look at the candle, right here's your candle. Your candle is closed, the body of the candle, not the wicks. The wicks are the highs and low of the candles. That's for novice amateur traders. I'm concerned about the open versus close. So I'm looking at the body of the candle. That's the open versus close. If it closes right there inside of a closed trend box, and I'm not talking about straddling or going over top the closed line. See how the straddles? I don't count those as closed inside of a trend box. I'm talking the body of the candle, the open versus close, is actually closed inside of the trend box. So that tells me there's speed in the market. So if there's speed in the market, what happens is this. Here's another one right here. If there's speed in the market, that tells me I want to look for a retracement trade because I, I, I have an active sell that's possibly coming in the market because I have red trend boxes with speed. I'm trying to get short the market. So that's one characteristic. That's why the trend boxes are very important. That's why I put them first up there. They're very important. The second uh, 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 um, indicator we use is we use the line in the sand. This is the blue line here on the 9 Simrenko and here on my shorter time frame, the 5 Simrenko. If you are below it, you should be a net seller in the market. If you are above it, you should be a net buyer in the market. So this will let us know on the scope of trend if we're in an uptrend or downtrend. So for the trend box, we're red, downtrend. We're below the line in the sand, downtrend. So those two parameters right there just told you that we are in a downtrend. Number three, which everybody knows, and I just went over this a little bit, a moving averages are one of the worst indicators that, uh, that can be out there because they're very lagging by nature. But they're one of the best indicators for trend if you look at them at the right way. I use moving averages. I have three of them on here. And like I always tell everybody, there's not an exact science with moving averages. There, uh, the 200 is not better than the 50. 50 is not better than the 18. And there's no magical moving average. There never will be because they're lagging. What they're great for is they're great for trend direction, though. And what I like to do, I have just three simple moving averages in here. I have a 50-day moving average. There's no secret sauce to moving averages. 50-day moving average, here's a 20. And here's a um, here's a 8 moving average. If the 8 below the 20, 20 is below the 50, you know, your smaller is below the larger, you're in a downtrend. I mean, that's just pretty simple, right? So 
but it's my least favorite of all of them because it's lagging indicator. But I like to look at the angle too. You can see we're angled down here. If you're angled down a good degree angle down, you know you're in a downtrend. So those are my three top indicators you use for trend. If I get the trend right, you're about 50% there already on a trade without even taking a setup, without even pulling the trigger because you're not fighting against all the algorithms out there and so on. So trend box is my favorite. Trend box, I got a lot. That's our proprietary indicator. And what's neat about the trend box is you won't find this anywhere in the world because I actually built this thing from ground up. Um, this thing is beautiful because what it does, what I recognized over the years of trading is you need speed in the market. If you don't have speed, you can't really look for retracement trading. So this tells us speed, right? If I have two bodies of the candle close less, is speed on below the line of sand, so I'm gonna look for retracements. So then, now we know trend, right? So now how do we take setups? So now that we have the trend, on the trend, this is our trend chart, our far left chart, it's a longer term Renko chart. That's a nine sim Renko. Okay, that's a very large Renko chart. And that's another thing, we have our own Renko bar. We have our proprietary own Rinko bar that we designed ourselves and locked to our own server. The reason being is that this Rinko bar has a lot of different filters built into it already too. So when you put our Rinko bar next to someone else's Rinko bar, you won't get the same results. So this Rinko bar then will tell us, uh, I mean, this Rinko bar with the trend chart will tell us if we're in a downtrend or uptrend. So you see the Rinko bar will turn red and it'll turn green. Red, meaning there's selling pressure. Green, there's buying pressure. Okay? So, that being said, let's, let's move on here. So, how do we look for setups then? We know the trend now. Trend box is red. We got speed in the market. So, I want to be active looking for an active trade when I got speed here and when I got speed here. And if you want to be really, uh, if you want to be conservative with the system, just wait for speed boxes on a larger time frame and look for a retracement. That's been basically right to the point. So let's take a look at the trend box. With it. Before we even look at this right chart, and I'll tell you what market profile, how it plays in, and these symmetry dots. Let's just take a look. This is the main chart I really want to focus on in the morning. Because these are supply demand lines then, right here, the, these blue lines. And what these, how, how these are generated, they're generated based upon previous accumulation or distribution in the market. Now, supply demand lines are timeless. They're, they've been around since every since the market's been around because you, the thing about accumulation distribution, that's how the market works, right? So what, how these are generated are based upon where there's a big interest in the market. Where did the market pause in the past that shows there's a major accumulation distribution? Because it's very important for us to play off of in the future. So if I have a speed box that comes in then, if I have a speed box that comes in, and I'm in a downtrend and I'm red. There's two ways you can trade. There's actually three total ways that you can trade this system for entries. My, my favorite one uh, would be market profile. I'll, we'll go trend box first, so just to show you. Here's uh, I, uh, trend lines, which would be the supply demand lines. Let's go to this first since I've got the chart. Supply demand lines. And those are those blue lines. The second way would be market profile. This chart over here, I'll go over that in a second. Let's don't get ahead of ourselves. Market profile. And third would be my sim dots, which is this bottom right chart, and we'll go over that also. So when I'm looking to enter the trade, after I know the trend, these are my three indicators that I'm trying to use to get into the market. All right, so there's my trend chart, and here would be my entry. To qualify the entry setup. Okay, so let's go over this first of all, supply demand, then mark per other symmetry chat. So First, you gotta you gotta get your mind right first, right? So this has to be your check down first. You gotta get this right first, and then we check ourselves down into the entry. But when I'm talking about the trend box, I'm looking for speed. If you want to be like I said, just 
go ahead and cherry pick your trades. Wait for speed. Wait for a speed box. And that's two candles are closed less inside of a trend box right here. So here and here. So let's look at the supply demand line. So these supply demand lines are automatically generated. So what I want to do then, if I'm in a downtrend, I'm not trying to buy demand lines. Old demand lines, if I'm above price, let me get an arrow up here. Let me show you how supply and demand lines work. Keep this simple. Don't make this difficult. Very simple to understand. So these are supply demand lines. There we go. These are the supply demand. So if if I'm here, this is a demand line then. Demand. Old demand becomes new supply. That's how supply and demand works. So if I'm in a downtrend, here is my my trend box, speed box, two candles close or less. I'm red trend box. I want to short. I'm below the line in the sand. My moving averages are crossed down. I get a speed box that comes in that act activates a sell. So now what I want to do is I'm going to wait for a body of the candle to close, a body of the candle to close below my demand line because it becomes new supply. And I want to look for a retracement. It's called an ABC short. I want to let it to retest. Once it retests this level, of 92 and three quarters right here to 19 and three quarters I have an active sell I want to look to short the market right here so this is an active short at the retracement when it touches that retracement because that speed box right there okay as I come down then again I hit my demand line so this is a good place to scale from 92 and three quarters all the way down to 85 and three quarters you have that as a, your profit potential. All right, you have about eight point S and P target. Remember, this is a long time frame. So these candles are a little bigger. Doesn't look like much there. That's eight point S and P play. That's twenty four ticks of potential between this supply line to this demand line. Twenty four ticks is a lot of ticks in the S and P. Listen, we're not scalpers in the room. We don't look for a one tick, three tick, four tick trades like a lot of traders do and put a two point stop in. You gotta have a good reward to risk. So. This is a key level. It's a key level to look to short against. So when we come down to the demand line again, we're looking not to buy this bounce, but scale contracts and see if we can get down to the ultimate next level in the next demand line. So let's look for the next setup then. If I retrace, I mean, if I get, if I close a body of the candle, close below my demand line again. Remember, we're not buying, we're not counter trend traders. There's only one way we counter trend trade and our members know how to do it using market profile. Other than that, 85%, 90% of your trades are all trend trade retracements with this system. Counter trend traders get beat up over and over again. They're novice traders. They think they know what they're doing. I'm trying to catch the low, the high of the market, and they just get beat up all the time. Is it, we're not counter trend traders. We're, we're not smarter than the market. We're not trying to be. We're just trying to go with the flow, order flow. So when we break down below the demand line here, we're looking for what? Body candle close. Here's a trend box. I'm looking for it to retest. This actually stopped to the exact tick on my supply line. Supply line. And there's your next trade setup. So if you're cherry picking your trades according to after midnight, if you're looking after midnight, you've only had two trade setups according to cherry picking your trades with speed, speed boxes with the trend box speed. And that's off a larger time frame. Okay? So those are your two best points of entry. Now, obviously, we cannot just trade off of a 9 Simrenko because your stops, 9 Simrenko is a very large time frame. So why do we have these smaller time frames over here? Because these can be our entry. This is a way for us to enter the market on a smaller time frame to get smaller stops. So the trend chart, though, it really sets everything up. It really does because you got your trend boxes, you got your line in the sand, you got your moving averages to get trend, and then you got your supply lines right here, demand lines to see where we break close below retest. So you know you really start smiling ear to ear when you're in a downtrend, red trend boxes, and you see a two candle close inside of a closed trend box. Like right now, this trend box is it more than two candles? Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's over fifteen right here, right? over 15 
candles inside of a, a trend box. Is that speed in the market? Absolutely not. If I want to get short this market again, I want to break this level. If it's going to show me weakness, then I want to see a speed box break this level right here. Speed box break that level right there, and let's look for the next retracement again and get short the market again. Okay? So let's keep that in mind. Now, what do I have down here on the bottom? This is a retracement indicator. Now, remember, this is a long, long time frame. So th this comes with the, 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 the system we like to use. It's, it's, a, it's basically a stochastic where you're looking for above 90% in downtrends and above 90 and below 90% in uptrends. So what I want to do is I can, I can check myself when I, when I close, if I have a speed box, right? If I have a speed box and speed was right here, get this in here. Speed was right here, right? Speed box is here and is below 90%, or, or I'm sorry, below um, 10%. I want that to get into retracement. So this tells me right there at 90%, when I'm touching 90% on that retracement up to here, that I'm at a level where we're extended, we're, 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 we're stretched. It's like a rubber band. Imagine taking a rubber band, your left hand, stretching it all the way out, and then letting go of it. What happens? It snaps back, right? Same way with the market on retracements. I want to be around 90%. So if I look on this trade setup, it hit right at 90% at this level. It hit right at 90% at this level. So I'm putting myself in a great position to win when that oscillator gets up there in the longer time frame. So now I just cherry pick my trades on three trades using that oscillator. So now I got everything going for me. And you can see that was a session. I mean, that was a swing high. That was a swing high. That was a swing high. All right. So it's a great way for you to use this oscillator to see if the market is extended in a downtrend. We want to snap back and get extended. So that's how I use this oscillator. Is this oscillator great by itself? It's absolutely worthless. If you use this oscillator by itself, you're going to lose a lot of money, you know, because if you don't got the trend right, you're done. If you don't got the right side of the market, you're done. If you don't have speed in the market, you're done. So this is like a one of the, I call it a second to third tier, really a third tier indicator. The first two, the first tier indicators are trend box. Line the sand, supply demand lines, market profile. Those are first tier indicators because they're leading indicators. You know, third tier indicators are like moving averages, oscillators. They're great in conjunction with the trading plan. They're absolutely terrible by themselves. And you can just get really beat up by it. So let's keep that in mind. So what we're trying to do is, like I said, we're looking for break retest trades. I know this video is getting long, but I want to make sure we got this right. So it's basically looking for a break. Retest with trend. Once it tests that line, how can we pull ourselves in? Now let's go to the next level. Let's look at pulling ourselves in. Okay? So that's a trend chart. The second one is market profile. Now market profile, get this out of the way over here. Market profile is very simple. Okay? Do not make it difficult. Market profile can be your best friend. It really can. Market profile is this been around since 1985 and I use a longer term profile. I don't use a 30 minute market profile. A lot of amateur traders use a 30 minutes, too short a time frame. I use a longer term profile. So I look for red is high value area. The big thick blue is the mark is the control point. The most volume is traded and the big thick green is the low value area. The low value area and the high value area are all generated from this blue line. The blue line is the most volume is traded. I never trade or look for a trade off this blue line unless you're in trend. So today I would look for a V top right now on market profile. I only look use the control point right here in down trending or up trending days. So I would look for the market to come up here to 97. And look for a VTOP. That should be a high probability trade right off that. You should see the market really respond off market profile by itself. What really is nice is when the line in the sand and the market profile on top of each other, you're going to see a lot of trades like this. That's called confluence. A lot of times 
you'll see them right sandwiched on top of each other and that usually is the turning point of the session. So I really like using the line in the sand like I talked about for trend, but it really acts as nice support and resistance. So I know this level up here when it comes up and test at 90 right here coming up, this is a major level because I've got what? I got a supply line at 90. I got my line in the sand at 90, so this is going to be a big level to get through. I know this is a big level for resistance because it's my control point and supply demand. So what I like to do is I look for stacked areas on this chart. And what that means is that I know that market profile and supply demand lines are my two most important indicators. In fact, fresh supply demand lines are so accurate, they're extremely accurate. It came out a fresh one right here at 1230 yesterday. To show you how accurate my supply demand lines are, if you bring this and go forward, this line projected at 1230, it projected all the way to today. It never touched. Look how it called the session low so far within a couple ticks on a fresh supply demand. So I love when fresh supply demands are generated. It's the fresh soft supply demand, fresh supply demand line. So that becomes a big demand. It happens to be a V bottom, caught the low of the session today. That's how important they are. So when they break retest, you know you got yourself good support and resistance. All right, but I use market profile in conjunction with my supply and demand because those essentially are my two top indicators in the room. That's what separates us from everybody out there, separates us from all the indicators out there. Trade Station gives you a thousand indicators. Ninja Trader gives you a lot of indicators for free. Why? Because they're worthless. They're worthless by nature because they don't work. A lot of them really don't work in conjunction with what the market's doing, right? Every indicator works once, but does every indicator work on a daily basis? The only indicators that will work on a daily basis will be order flow, period. What market profile does, it profiles the market. That's what it's doing. It's looking at the bell curve and it's telling you if where accumulation distribution has accumulated and distributed. The supply demand lines, it's telling you where the accumulation distribution had accumulated and distributed. That's not my opinion. That's not some lagging indicator like you all these indicators out there. That's actual order flow. So that is why these two indicators are extremely important, right? Extremely important. Moving averages, worthless. Stochastics by themselves, worthless. You know, the moving average convergence divergence, absolutely worthless, very lagging. You know, those are the type of indicators, uh, the ATR by itself, worthless. It's just so many, they mean nothing because they're not about order flow. So what we want to do as traders then is we want to look at supply demand. Supply demand is market profile supply demand line. So if I bring this out a little bit to make it more clear to you, I can clearly see this is a point of interest right here within a couple ticks. Now I got to be in a couple ticks and this is how the algo does it. This is the algo we're working on the room, the automated algo working on the room. You members have it. When it comes within a couple ticks, that's what we're looking at as a entry right there. That is a point of interest. This is a point of interest because market profile is stacked over top of my supply demand. Now they work all by themselves, but that is a level of interest. I don't want to be too far away from it, okay? I want to be just a couple ticks and look for a, uh, a support buy and sell. Now, don't get confused with these little dots in here. These are more price-based, swing-based indicators. I just use those for confluence. And then also my developing profile is just thin red and thin green. And what that thin red and thin green is, is basically if we're going to try to counter trend the market, counter trend trade the market. I got to be back inside that thin red or thin green or I don't try to counter the market, which only happens, like I said, around 15% of the time in the market anyway. So we can use those for confluence if they're stacked within a couple ticks of each other. Your main two ingredients are right here. Market profile, the thick, the blue, the red, the green. The supply demand, if they're stacked with a couple ticks, it should turn the market. All right, then we got the oscillator below in downtrending markets. If you break retest, same way for this oscillator below. All right, so that's what this chart's for to the right. It's market profile. It lets us know, like right now, we know this is a big level of interest here at 90, big level of interest at 97 that should turn the market for us. All right, so that's the second two top tier indicators right there. Supply demand, break retest. We know this is a big level of interest. We know this is a big level of interest. It worked out great. It's called three for three on the retracement trades this morning using that technique. Then over here, we got market profile to assist us. Just concentrate on where the blue line is, the red line, 
and the green line is if it stacks over top these levels then you got confluence the third most important are the symmetry dots now the symmetry dots are these levels that have red dots and blue dots um, you can put these on your own system we do have a one-time uh, lifetime license key for this uh, we have th uh, uh, lots and lots of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of traders around the world that use this uh, for all types of markets but they act as natural support and resistance and what we do is is it's used for confluence also if the markets in a downtrend and we break below one side of the symmetry we close below a body of the candle it should in a hard trending market downtrend it should retrace up not close above it it should hit its head and go right back down and this is a big level of interest in the market this morning this is where a supply demand line was and a market profile level so we had three times confluence all three indicators agreed at the same price point in time right there if you get two of the three indicators market profile supply demand or symmetry dots if they are all within a couple ticks of each other it should be a turning point in the market on any given market and that's just, you'll see thousands and thousands of trades where it'll do that. And so when you're in an uptrend, let's see, in an uptrend, it's the same way. If I break through in an uptrend, the market gets speed, and I'm breaking through here, then you're looking to come within a couple ticks, the symmetry dot should hold, we should go up. Break through, symmetry dots hold, we should go up. So they're just another indicator to help you out. Now what I have below, which I put in small, you can have it on your own charts. This is a market delta chart. So if I'm trying to go short, right? I'm trying to go short the market in a downtrend today. What Market Delta does is this, and it pretty much color codes with my trend boxes on my Simrenko. If I'm looking for an entry, this is your last entry technique. Delta negative 35, that's a pretty big number. Um, you don't have to look at the numbers per se, but after you get used to it, you'll see what numbers are good in different markets. But that, once it closes, here's your entry. Once you get a body that candle close red, a Market Delta closes red, that's your entry. Your entry should be at the low on a live fill, the low of this bar with slippage. Your stop loss should be two ticks above that swing high. We always want to maintain, I'm sorry, contain risk. So in that short, there is your stop as far as that goes with negative market delta. So we use that chart down below as our, as our entry chart. This is our entry chart. Symmetry dots work really great. Really, really, really great. And traders that have these across the world, I get a lot of compliments on these. A lot, a lot of compliments when we break outside of profile. When we break outside of profile, this is probably going to be your number one tool to look at. Why? Because there's typically no supply and demand outside of profile. Once you get outside of HVA, this red line or below LVA, the uh, LVA, you typically don't have any support or resistance. So if you don't have support and resistance, these symmetry dots are just, they just, you'll see some that have three, four, five, six, seven. We've had it one, one trading day, 13 trades worked out back to back on symmetry dots on hard trend days. I love symmetry dots on trend days. If we are hard trending down and the market's got speed, we typically trend about three out of, three out of five days in this environment we're in and chop two. But if you get outside a profile and there's nothing but space, there's nothing but black space below you, above you, the symmetry dots are a great place to look to get into the market. All right? So that's basically essentially it. Um, you look for your, your trend chart, and, and, and we're trying to program this. The members have been very helpful. Uh, there's an algo we're developing now. Uh, this automated algo that will they'll show these arrows automatically that comes up for you. A lot of the members have it in their hands right now. We are working it on it every two weeks to get it to exactly do exactly what we want to do here. We're, we're getting this thing programmed to, to, re, to do this exact thing. Look at the trend and look at these entry setups with supply, market profile, symmetry dots, when they conflue within a couple ticks of each other. And that's what we're currently working on right now. Um, where it automatically will pop up an arrow according to your parameters that you put in. So you can basically design your own algorithm with our uh, algo that we're working on currently with members in the room. Okay. So, but as far as manually putting in, that's what we want to do. Look for trend first. But the, the basically, you got to have trend, uh, you got to speed the market. So speed on a longer time frame here, this tells you when, this tells you when a nice, 
um, a nice little trade is coming. Look for speed. So I know this video was long. I think it's a great, it's an overdue training video. Gerald's going to put it out into the, um, he'll send everybody out, but he'll put it on the website.